Welcome back to the Bible study as we continue in 1 Peter. And just a quick reminder that uh, the, uh, the full text will be uh, pinned down below. Also, you can read it on X, and I'll leave a link uh, down below on it for that. With that, let's continue with our study. 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. In verses 3 and 5, Peter has just described the reality of our position as believers in Jesus Christ. God's mercy to us is great. In Christ we have a living hope that we too will be resurrected from the dead just as he was. Waiting for us is an endless glorious inheritance with our Father in heaven. And right this minute, we ourselves are being shielded from losing that inheritance by God's limitless power. Through faith in Christ, we have been saved, we are being saved, and we will be saved. Choosing to hold on in the middle of a storm. Again from today's verse. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Here, Peter makes an assumption about our response to this reality. He says that we rejoice in this. But do we? It's important here to separate the word rejoice from the idea of feeling only positive emotions. To rejoice, in this sense, does not necessarily mean to be happy, as we understand the terms today. While rejoicing may include positive feelings, the New Testament often communicates that rejoicing is a choice about how we think about our lives. James 1 verse 2 exhorts us to consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. And Philippians 4 4 underlines, Rejoice in the Lord always. In fact, Peter quickly acknowledges that his readers may be grieved or distressed by various trials in the present moment. He realizes they may be experiencing negative emotions because of their negative circumstances, and yet, he still assumes they are rejoicing in the reality of their eternal circumstances in Christ. Therefore, rejoicing is less about feelings and more about faith. It is less about maintaining some perfect emotional state and more about declaration. My life is worth rejoicing over because of what God is doing for me right now. I am provided for. My future is secure. Nothing can change that. I can choose to rejoice no matter what storm life is throwing at me. Tested and purified. Again from today's verse, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Here, Peter reveals that those trials which cause us grief have a point. We endure them for a reason. For the Christian believer, suffering always serves a purpose. Completing the sentence of James 1 referenced above, we find the reason why James wrote to consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Also, in Romans 5, 3 through 5, Paul wrote, We also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character and hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Likewise, Peter describes the benefit of these trials which distress us but don't prevent us from rejoicing. They test, purify, and prove our faith. When trials come, the believer makes a choice to continue to trust God in and through the trial. God continues to provide our faith grows even stronger. 
Peter also compares and contrasts our faith with the classic standard value for gold. Like gold, our faith is refined and purified by the heat of our trials. Unlike earthly gold, our faith will continue to be of great worth even in eternity. Finally, Peter says that our faith provides an opportunity to participate in giving and receiving praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. When Christ returns and all come to understanding the truth, he will receive honor as the true Lord and King, and our faith in him will be fully vindicated. This concept of rejoicing in the middle of a trial, persecution, disappointing, or sorrowful times is easy to understand but difficult to apply simply because we don't feel like it when tough circumstances arise. We'd rather blame, get angry, cry out to God to intervene, question, complain, seek the empathy of others, etc. But Peter rightly points out that we are to rejoice, for when we do so, we actually choose to make God the focus of our attention rather than ourselves or the present circumstance. No matter what we are going through, He is great and worthy to be praised. And as we rejoice in the goodness of God despite our suffering, not only does God's peace come upon us because we remind ourselves that He is in control, the world can't help but notice, and some are even convinced that our God is indeed who we say He is because of the evidence of our response. In Acts 16, we find Paul and Silas were arrested, stripped, beaten, severely flogged, and imprisoned in Philippi after Paul drove out a spirit from a girl. But as they prayed and sang hymns to God about midnight, an earthquake shook the foundation of the prison so that all its doors flew open and the chains came loose from all the prisoners. Shouting out to the jailer who was about to kill himself because he believed that all the prisoners had broken free, that they all were all indeed still there. Paul not only saved the man's life, but also had an opportunity to witness and speak the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house, so that the jailer and all his families were baptized immediately. The next day, Paul and Silas were released by the authorities. Without their suffering and the testimony of their prayers and praises, the jailer and his family would not have accepted Christ as Lord of their lives that day. So, dear brothers, may these verses greatly encourage us to overcome our instinctive response to be freed of suffering, pain, humiliation, etc. To instead rejoice in them so that we can allow the Holy Spirit to do His transformative work on us. In doing so, we may provide an effective testimony to the world of the one true and living God. And that's our Bible study for today. Uh, just a reminder, you can find uh, the transcript, just the written, on Acts as uh, the Forge Bible Study. It's also, if you're on uh, listening to this on YouTube or Rumble, it'll be pinned down below and uh, also on Spotify as the Forge Bible Study. Thank you.